Hi guys, it's Isa and welcome to another video. Today we're gonna do my top 10 favorite YA fantasy books. Here in this channel we do book recommendations and reviews. I publish bookish content every Thursday and Sunday for you to enjoy. If you want to stay tuned, click the subscription button and if you end up loving the video, give it a thumbs up. The books that we're gonna see are not order by preference. I really believe that the top 10 are fantastic. And we're gonna start with The Kingdom of Bag by Marie Lu. This book is such a great read. It tells the story of Nanelle Mozart, so the sister of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And she, as her brother, is very talented in music. And she is the older sister and she has been obsessed with music since very little and she has been playing and all that but she has a very difficult role because in their society women cannot really you know play and so she needs to struggle and see how her brother is very talented as well as she is but he is kind of this rising star and so we follow the story of the two since they are a little children and how they grow up and how Mozart starts to get more famous, raiding through different cities and in those travels they start to create a world called the Kingdom of Bach. And this is actually true. Mozart had a sister called Nanerld and between the two they created this world called the Kingdom of Bach. What we see with this book is that the Kingdom of Bach which starts being, you know, this very mesmerizing world, it starts to blend and intertwine into their day to day up to the point in which we don't really know how much of it is true or it's not. And I really, 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 really recommend it. We continue with Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, which is honestly one of my favorite reads of the year. And I cannot convey enough how much I loved this series. It's a duology, so we have Strange the Dreamer and News of Nightmares, and both of the books are outstanding. The writing style is beautiful, and it tells the story of a main character, Laszlo. Laszlo has all his life been a misfit. He has been obsessed all his life with a CD called Weep because in this city it appears that magic reside and that they were kind of very advanced. But some time ago, this city started to be, you know, like forgotten. And actually, Weep isn't the real name of the city. It's just like the name that remains because some sort of course or something happened into that city. Up to the point in which people don't really believe that we exist anymore. It's a little bit of the Atlantis similar to us and it actually is a little bit similar to the movie. But one day people from Weep come to Last Lost Town seeking help because something is very wrong in Weep and they need help. And so Laszlo jumps into the help and he starts a journey to go into the city and I won't unveil what happens after but this is just the beginning. He gets there and a lot of stuff happened. We are presented to the other point of view, which is amazing. In this world, there are magical powers and each of the characters have one specific power. It's not just one layer of magic, but either a rich combination of powers. Really, I'm not a crier while reading and this book came to some scenes that really hit the spot for me and that made the reading just an amazing experience and I overall cannot recommend this more. Please give it a try. And then we're gonna move to Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. And what is to discuss about Mistborn? It's a trilogy that it's complex, that it has a lot of different characters that in essence discuss the story of this world where the bad guy won and this world has been ruled by this monstrous of a person who is kind of immortal and he's been ruling for thousands of years. In his rule, kind of the world has crumbled. We have ash everywhere and people is really, you know, not having their good time. And an uprising starts to boil and this uprising is presented by our main man, Kelsier. And Kelsier is this guy that it's, you know, 
very charismatic. He really believes that the world can change. He starts recruiting very elite people for a massive heist, but obviously this heist is just the beginning and the end game is to say goodbye to our good old madman that is ruling. And so the magic system in this world is amazing. It is one of the most intricate worlds that I've read, but it's really accessible. And so the magic in this world works through the ingestion of metals. Each metal grants a different power and not everyone has kind of the power of making these metals turn into something a great, but rather it's something that very few have the chance on. And it usually ends like that. We maybe have someone that is able to consume one metal and be kind of this empath and being able to modulate the emotions of others, but it's really rare that someone can hold more than one metal, but Kelsier does. And so the story goes from there really it will break you very fast paced it's rich it has different points of view all of them very interesting and i think it's a very good opportunity if you want to enter into brandon sanderson especially the first book the final empire and i really really recommend then we go to legendborn and this series is still not finished it will be finished next year but i couldn't know introduce it into this list because it was also one of my best reads of the year. I think that both the magic, the story, the characters are phenomenal and are worth definitely a try if you haven't done it yet. And it follows the story of Brie. Brie has just suffered a terrible trauma because her mom has just passed away and she is grieving and so she starts a new course and in the first days of this course in a party she kind of sees an incident where some weird magical animals starts to attack people at a party and everyone gets their mind erased but her memory comes back and so she starts analyzing and starts to get her nose into this stuff that it's happening and very soon we see how she gets into this Arthurian society called Legendborn and it seems that in this society they are kind of the heirs and the scions of King Arthur Merlin and all of that. She gets her foot into this society because every year they kind of open some trials for people to come and be able to be the scion of one of the different lines. It's a little bit complex at the beginning because the writer gets a little bit advanced with the structure of the science, the lineage, but really the magic system, it's great. You will have this Arthurian line, but also root magic because of Bree's legacy. Bree starts to think that there might be more to her mom's death and it's a blend between a true crime case and Arthurian mythology and magic and it has a little bit of a love triangle that will keep you hooked to the pages and really it's a great debut of the writer and I cannot wait for the second one next year so really really recommend. We move to and surprise to no one Six of Crows by Lieber Dugo. It's a very world loved duology and it follows the point of view of six characters and this story is at its core a heist but it's way much more than that. The magic of this book is mainly the characters. We follow characters that aren't in any way or form perfect. They are nuanced, they are grey, and we follow this gang through this ambiance that is a blend between Amsterdam and then also a little bit of Venice, and we follow them into this heist and how they need to face different situations that will test their bonds but also will create new ones and what can i say i loved it i read it the first time and didn't love it give it a second try this year and i absolutely adored it consumed this book and crooked kingdom so fast i really 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 recommend we move then to the cruel prince by holly black and this series is different it talks about the fae but the fae in this world aren't the precious creatures that we're used to, but rather mischievous, very mean creatures that actually 
tend to do bad stuff and this series is a little bit more complex for me. I absolutely loved book two, was pretty much in love with book one and then book three was a little bit more meh and maybe from all the books that we are sharing maybe this series is the one that doesn't feed everyone. I think that you really need to be a little bit permissive because in the first book the male character is savage and he treats the main girl, our main girl, you very bad and so hmm, this eventually is overcome and the characters develop a relationship but you know like you need to move ahead from that if you can do that then this is a fantastic series if you cannot then this story mainly talks about our girl Yur, who is this human that a long time ago was kind of kidnapped by this general of the Fae and was taken into his household. And so she is living there and she and her sister are kind of like the only humans in this realm. And the humans are the only creatures that can lie. This story just goes way beyond how Yud moves around the society and it actually goes to a plot in which the throne is to be taken and Jude ends up playing a key role in all of these. This series is super worth it if you like a character that is smart, that is courageous and you know she is like the typical character that outwits everyone. We move then to A Flame in the Mist by René Adier and this is a duology that in my opinion is heavily underrated. It's set in this feudal Japan setting and it follows the story of Mariko who is a girl that was betrothed to these men when she is going she is attacked by a band of warriors called the Black Clan. At the beginning Mariko's only goal is to you know survive and hide but very soon she decides to start taking revenge and in order to do that she starts to impersonate a poor man and so this becomes kind of a Mulan retelling. When Mariko gets there she sees that there is way more to the eye than what she thought and things you know unfold from there. We see how she is valued, how she is able to challenge herself and you know also to fall in love. We move to another quartet that it's very well loved which is an ember in the ashes and this series honestly has all of the elements and I really believe that it's one of the most popular YA series for something. We have this fantastic setting in which we follow our girl Leia and so she is part of a clan let's say of scholars. Their goal is to actually create an uprising and change the scales of the current society. Leia's plan is to get infiltrated into this top academy of warriors and at that moment is where her path crosses with Elias who is this elite warrior that is actually the son of the general of all of this regime which is a very Roman inspired setting. We see how between the two you know like their destinies get intertwined and how both Leia and Elias want in a way to escape their destiny and the first book actually tells the story of a set of tournaments that are to be done within the different members of this elite school of warriors and the one that wins is actually the one that is going to have the power of the whole regime. So like shit it's complex, the stakes are high. We have this human and very hideous villain who is Elias' mom, this general, but we also see throughout the different series how the magic system also starts to exist and how there is something bigger than just this mom and what are the stakes for the regime. This story has magic, it has a slow burn, it has different points of view, different motivations, it honestly is a very good read. At the moment then has arrived to add a little bit of Sarah J Maas into this video with Throne of Glass. I acknowledge that this series has a lot of fans but then also a lot of people that hate it and I think that it's in part because of how the story is written. There are around six or seven books in this story and they are actually very different. It seems that there are two different 
series. We have the first one, which is first and second book, and something happens in the second book that makes books three and onwards way different. And so the story at the beginning, it's a little bit more leaning towards YA, I'd say, and it's very familiar tropes. But then from book three, the story gets more complex. There are different players that are introduced, different points of views. It's not just the main character. And I really think that it's a very good story, granted. There's a lot of tropes that will not surprise you. And as with every Sarah J Maas book, we have a little bit of a chosen one trope. But the story actually surprised me and there are some plot twists that I wasn't really expecting and that kept me very hooked. The story for the first book tells the story of Selena. She has just been released from this jail in the mountains where it seems that only the most problematic and dangerous people is being kept. We see how she has been freed by the king himself because he won her to be her champion in a set of tournaments. She gets there, she starts competing in these tournaments, but it seems that people start dying and that there is something amiss, there's some kind of weird dark monster. And you know, like things are weird. She needs to find herself, discover her powers, her extent, you know, start to fall in love. I really, really recommend. And last but not least, we have The Aurelian Cycle by Rosaria Munda. This is an ongoing series and we still have one book to go, which I believe is going to be released next year. But again, I just needed to add it because reading Fireborn and Flamefall has really been one of the biggest reading pleasures of this year. I really think that even if you're not much into the YA spectrum, you can go to this series because it leans a little bit more mature. It has more complex characters and the story itself, it's more nuanced. And in this story, we follow Annie and Lee. They have been friends since they are children. And at this point, they are both top warriors and they are about to compete in a set of dragon riding tournaments. The prize for all of these is that the one that wins will have the control of the dragon fleet. So again, the stakes are high. How interesting is this world already, right? We have best friends that need to compete between themselves. We have dragons, but wait and see, because this story just gets better and better, because this society is kind of new. Some years ago, the population created a rebellion that ended with all of the dragon lords and all of the dragons, leaving just some sort of eggs of dragons. And the remaining dragons are the only ones that are still today. And so just riding a dragon, it's kind of a phenomenal thing that can happen to you. But the story gets even more interesting because Lee was the son of one of the most powerful dragon lords that existed in this realm. And Annie was actually the daughter of a family of no ones. And so it seems that Lee's dad, so his father, the main evil dragon lord, killed all of Annie's family. And so they have been friends even though they have completely different values and they have a completely different backstory. How amazing is that? And there's even more because we start seeing how it seems that some of the dragon lords have survived and that this part of the revolution is starting again, this time to reinstore the dragon lords. And the story unfolds from there. 10 out of 10. Chef Kiss, it's an amazing read. Alrighty then, that was it for today. I really hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel and I really hope to see you soon in another video. Bye!